Now I intended to practice for this, but you know, I think it just I think it just makes more sense if I wing it. All right. It's time to live out this channel's intended purpose. A YouTube channel about Dungeons and Dragons. That's right, that's what I wanted it to be, but upon learning about what it takes to do YouTube stuff, I had to put that on hold, decided to play some games in the meantime. If you haven't seen them, go check out the rest of the stuff on the channel. But anyway, Dungeons and Dragons. Alright, so, what what is Dungeons and Dragons? Dungeons and Dragons is a sweet tabletop RPG that puts, you know, a DM, a dungeon master, a game master, a GM, whatever you want to call it, and players, PCs, player characters, around the table and you all essentially are in cahoots to try and tell an amazing story whether that's what happens or not who only knows there's no telling what's gonna happen and, that, and that's the glory of the game it's the glory of the game but yeah so anyways you've heard of D&D if you haven't I, I don't know what's up but you've heard of it and you want to play. But how do you start playing? Well, I guess before I tell anybody any of that stuff, I should probably cover why and how I'm qualified to talk about this stuff. So I'll quick episode into my origins. Uh, so I think this was back in about 2014, I want to say. One of my buddies bought, I think... Uh, was the latest and greatest Call of Duty at the time. I don't remember which one off the top of my head, but convinced all of us to go and play it. We all bought it, downloaded it, started playing it. A, a few days later, I woke up and I was just sitting there thinking to myself, like, all right, where is everybody? Like, I thought we were going to play today. And I see they're all in a call on Skype. And so I join in. I'm like, guys. Are we ready for Call of Duty? And they're like, well, no, actually, we're doing something else. Yeah, we're going to play some uh, some Pathfinder, some uh, some Dungeons and & Dragons. And I was like, oh. Oh, I see. Yeah, Bryce, you want to join us? I was like, um, no, actually. I, I kind of just want to play, uh, you know, Call of Duty. A at the time, I couldn't. I didn't want to say anything because I had just gotten into Magic the Gathering, the trading card game, and I was having a lot of fun with that. And when I was then, when it was then suggested to me to join in a game of Dungeons and Dragons, I was like, "No, I, like I'm already committing to a new level of nerdy. Like, please, no, I, I can't go anymore. Like, that's the bottom of the bucket." Woke up the next day, started playing again. I joined the Skype call, and they're all still making their characters. And they said, are you sure you don't want to play? And I was like, no, I don't. How long is it going to be? I want to, I want to play Call of Duty with you guys. And the guy, I think his name was Roman, uh, who was DMing for them at the time, he said, oh, I could take anywhere between like three and like seven hours, maybe more. And I went, oh my God, are you kidding me? What takes that long? Oh, screw it, I'll play. So uh, I made my character, started playing. And within 15 minutes, I decided that this was the single greatest game ever invented. Yeah, through all the hoops I ran trying to get into it, the moment I started playing it, it was the greatest thing I had ever seen. And since then, I've been playing for, oh God, seven or eight years. The first few years were off and on, sometimes months in between games. Um, I got tired of waiting for a DM a GM, a game master, a dungeon master to, to host a game. So I remember I downloaded all of the Pathfinder books in an app on my phone and I read through all of them. And then like literally I think the following year, 5th edition came out, which was the most accessible, hands-on, easy version of D&D that had ever existed. And immediately jumped ships to that one. I had tried my hand DMing Pathfinder a little bit. Pathfinder, for anyone who doesn't know, it's basically just Dungeons & Dragons with a different name, to be legally distinct. Um, I wouldn't say any of them are worse or better. Everything has pros and cons, but Pathfinder, I would say, is definitely less beginner-friendly. Uh, but yeah, so as soon as I became a DM, the number of games I played 
doubled almost. Suddenly it was only like a month in between games because I was the guy people came to. It was it was amazing. It was great. Um, and then years and years would go by of off and on games. It wasn't it wasn't amazing, but it was fun. Um, I had tried my hand at long term games. I had done one shots, which are games that are basically one game, one session, start to finish. That's it. Um, and it, it was okay. And then when I was in my senior year of college. I invited a group of friends to play a game of D&D. We got invited to uh, my college professor. He's now my good friend. Um, I got invited to his house as I elbow my Dr. Pepper can. That was close. It almost fell. Um, we were invited to his house to play. And we started playing. Someone didn't show up. Turns out he didn't show up forever. And then he just didn't show up ever. Um, so we gave up on that endeavor. And it was just me and two guys. And now... That game has been going for four years almost, come April, and they're on like session 70, they're level 13. What I thought was going to be a very short thing turned into a very long thing. Now I've got a second game going, I do one shots in between. If it was a job, like one I actually made money from, I'd be making bank, I know that much. Uh, but yeah, like the moment I discovered it was the greatest game ever, I never looked back. It's It's been amazing. But, uh, of course, obviously, since COVID hit, uh, in-person games are a little harder to do. Uh, but anyway, so that's my origin kind of qualification on the game. Now, for everyone else, you've more than likely heard of the game. If you don't want to play it, I don't quite frankly know why you're still here. Go do something else. I'm sure there's videos elsewhere on YouTube that are more interesting to you. Uh, but for those of you who are interested in playing, hi, welcome, enjoy, because I'm hopefully I'm going to start rolling D&D content out alongside some other games. But yeah, so, uh, my advice on, you've heard of D&D and you want to get into it? Just do it. Oh my god, do it. You will have zero regrets. Holy crap, just do it. Okay, how do you do it? That's that's the hard part. So, you, obviously D&D... <laughs> It's not a solo game. It can be. If you're the DM, it's more than likely a solo game. Is you're, if you're anything like me and you're in your room, it's dark and cold. The curtains are shut. You've got 17 plates of pizza snacks and a tower of Dr. Pepper cans around you. And you're just trying to plan what those freaking idiots are going to do next. But yeah, so obviously once with the COVID stuff, once all this dies down, it'll be easier to do it in person. But uh, online games are viable. They are. They really are. Um, if you have a group of friends, like nerdy friends, this will be much easier process. Just suggest it to them and see how it goes. Um, otherwise the D&D community is typically extremely nice people and you all have a common interest. You all love D&D. It'll be very easy to get along with one another. Trust me. I'm, I'm friends with people that I don't think I would ever even want to associate with or be you know, close to outside of D&D, but because of D&D, we're, D we're fairly friendly with one another. Um, yeah, you have lovely sites. Uh, Reddit, I'm sure you could find a few things on. YouTube channels, you could find some things on. Not throwing mine out there, but I, mine's not well known enough for you to find anything on there. But yeah, you know, uh, also Roll20. Roll20 is a beautiful service made to play D&D online. And there are ways to meet and find people on there. Um, and I'm sure there's some other sites that I don't ever really, I don't go to. I don't know. I, I haven't explored much. I've been lucky enough to kind of have people who have a, a vague interest in it that I'm able to kindle the interest on it enough to make them actually play. Now, once you have some friends, be them in flesh and blood or digital, and they're probably robots. Um, next is the books. So obviously you need books for D&D. Now, I won't, I won't support pirating, but if you can get your hand on some books, do it. Obviously, support your developers. Go out, buy them. Uh, the original books are probably a little cheaper now. I bought them all at full price at like $40 or something, so uh, I committed hard. Yeah, you need three books primarily. You're going to want yourself the Monster Manual, which isn't necessary, but it's very helpful. You can Google all the monsters individually otherwise. Uh, but for sure, you want the Player's Handbook this beautiful red cover here this has literally the rules of the entire game in it even though it's called the player's handbook you, you, it's meant for players 
but it, I'd argue it is more valuable for the DM than the DM's guide is. Now moving into that, the third book, The DM's Guide. The Dungeon Master's Guidebook. Now this is exactly what it says it is. It is a guidebook. It is not a rule book. There is, I think, literally one of the first paragraphs in the book, it explicitly states, this is a guide. It does not account for everything that happens. Use your best judgment. Or something along those lines, which is amazing. So you'll want these three books, friends, and then you need dice. Lots of them, thousands of them, thousands of them, bloody thousands of them. No, not really. You only need like, what, 10? Less than that? And you'll be good to go. Uh, after dice, though, um, you'll mostly only roll that d20 one. All the rest of them are just whatever. But the, the, the d20 you'll use like 90% of the time. It's the big, most round one there with the 20s on it. And after that, you need a character sheet that you'll learn the crazy intrinsic rocket science algebra, trigonometry, and, you know, everything from astrology to zoology to fill that freaking thing in. But once you have that filled in, you have your dice, be they colorful, sparkly, shiny, made of plastic, made of metal, or otherwise. You have your friends who are willing or unwilling to be there. And you're all ready to go. So, now, ah, uh, man. Now the hard part. What, how, how do you actually play Dungeons and Dragons? Well, that's the hard part. So... I guess the best way I could describe a game of Dungeons and Dragons, right? So you need you need to buy into the fact that you're all sitting around a table and it's literally a game about talking. So if you're with friends, this is a much easier process. The dice kind of add a little bit of an intrinsic value to keep it more hands-on. And then the character sheet is there to be obviously like a keeper of knowledge that you don't need to be. You have all these numbers and abilities and things you can reference and you don't have to keep them all in your memory. As a DM, I have them all in my memory, uh, whether I like it or not. My brain just chose to remember all that stuff. I, I have no say in the matter. I literally sleep, live, and dream D&D. &D. It is a blessing and a curse. But yeah, so if I had to describe D&D, &D, I would say it is, it's, it's a back and forth, like a bounce board game. You throw something at the board, it bounces back to you. So basically what will happen is the DM, the GM, the Game Master, the Dungeon Master, I'll use DM just for going on. The DM will describe the scene. They will include many different details, descriptions, such as where you are, what's the temperature, what's the time of day, um, who's around you. You know, he'll describe what is around you. Are you in a building? A lot of games like to start in a tavern. Um, you know, the feel, the sound, the shape, the, 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 you know, just the general flavor of everything around you. And then once they once they give you that description, they motion to you and say, all right, what do you do with that information? And then you tell the DM what you want to do. And the DM will tell you what happens as a result of what you did and then wait to see what you do next. So it's, it's a game of back and forth. Uh, when it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's very easy. You start throwing, you know, a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth person into it, it starts getting complicated. Uh, four, I found, is like the magic number. Four is a beautiful number. There's just enough people to have the game be very diverse, and then there's just a low enough number of people to have the game not drop to a standstill when you're all waiting for everybody to take their turn doing something. Um, but otherwise, the DM creates the setting for you, or there's pre-made settings you can buy. There's lots of them. They're fun. I don't play them a lot. I do all my stuff homebrew. Um, but essentially, d and is, it's, it's you, it's the DM giving you all the tools, the recipe, the pieces, everything you need for your characters to tell the story of their adventure. Now, obviously, there's no script. All of it is improv. And the sooner you accept that D&D is both anything and everything, the sooner you can get to really play in the game the best way possible and just embracing it for what it is. Anyways, though, that's going to be the first video on this. Um, I hope anyone who watches this and listens to it, I hope this, I hope this video is something that helps you get into D&D. Uh, I'm going to be doing more videos covering different subjects and things. Uh, this is just sort of like the introduction, if you will. 
I'll cover different subjects later. Uh, if anyone has a subject they want to have gone over, I I'll do it. Either if it's in, you know, comment form as an answer to you right there, or if I just do a whole video on it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure <laughs> yet. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, if you liked this, like it. If you want to see some more videos, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the bell icon. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, criticisms, and or witticisms, leave a comment. Uh, but until then, adios all.